Hi, this is Welcome to 1979. My name is Jeremy Bernstein. I'm a staff engineer here. I also head the archival division of the studio. I mean, they're doing tape transfers, but uh, also sometimes vinyl, cassette transfers, all that. Um, we're an analog-centric recording studio in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we also have digital recording capabilities, full Pro Tools HD rig. Um, most people come here to record on tape, but it's probably 70-30 split between analog and digital recording. Um, we're here in our control room right now. It's a pretty large control room, which is nice for social distance sessions like we have to do in 2020. Um, standing by our vintage MCI console, which we've modded. Um, it's got switchable preamps from a vintage API style done by Cappy preamp or your MCI preamp. Um, some other mods that we've done to the console are the decay times for our AKG BX20 spring reverb is right here. So you can just grab that while you're at the desk. You don't have to go into our machine room where the spring lives. As well as we've got a mono slapback MCI tape machine delay deck over there, which we have the Vera speed control brought over to the side of our console. So that can be adjusted on the fly. Um, next to that, we've got a Trident ADB sidecar. So 10 channels of Trident preamps EQs with its own internal busing system. Uh, and I love those, those EQs are incredible. We've got our house machine, which we do most of our tape tracking to, is our Mara machine restored MCI JH24, 24 track tape machine. And we're equipped to do eight track, 16 track, 24 track sessions. I would say nearly all of our sessions that we do to tape are done on 24 track with the occasional 16 track session thrown in from time to time. When you come to record here at Welcome to 1979, we include all of the tape as part of our day rate. So you don't have to pay for the use of tape. A digital session and an analog session are the same price. Um, we just, at the end of a session, will migrate from analog to digital, do a tape transfer, give you your files, and clients will leave with their digital files ready to overdub or mix or whatever. Big control room here. I'd say, okay. yeah. So what's the dimension? Least, what would yeah. you say it is? It's probably about 30 feet long, would I'd you say? say? Yeah, at least, yeah. I'd say this dimension's at least 30 feet by about 25 feet, so it's a nice big room. Yeah, and once a year we have our annual recording summit in here, and this uh, our rack units are just on wheels, so we just wheel that back against the wall. And I mean, we fit, we fit nearly 100 people in this room when that's acceptable. So not this year, but last year for our recording summit, we had almost 100 people in here. Um, this year we did our summit virtually um, online with Zoom links and stuff. But So this yeah. is the epicenter wherever all the signals end up coming from. Why don't you show some of the recording spaces on this floor and on some others? We've got a lot of recording space. Pretty much the entire studio has access to tie lines, which will get connected to either console or outboard pre's. So we've got in here, we've got kind of our vocal overdub room. A lot of times after doing our basic tracking, we'll bring um, the vocalist up here. Maybe it's a like acoustic guitar vocal overdub. And uh, this room sounds really great for all of that. Um, yeah, we've got an upright piano in here. It's an old player piano. Um, we've got two pianos in the building, both uprights, but they've got very different characters. This one's a much softer sound compared to the one downstairs, which is a little more aggressive and brash. Um, so maybe we might mic up both pianos on a session. That's not uncommon. Maybe for the ballad, they'll play on this one. For more honky-tonk vibe, they'll go downstairs and use that piano. Okay, in the little lounge area? Yeah, it's called the makeout room. Upright bass in here is slamming. Sounds great in this room. Um, sometimes we'll do fiddle. Hand claps sound really good in this room. We've, there's a few things that we really like in this room. That's awesome. You say hand claps. That's like it's just hand clap. This is the hand clap. This is the clap room. There's some power supplies in here. Machine yep. room. Machine room. Don't record in here, but um, we've got our AKG spring in there. Lawson plate reverb. Oh, here's the plate reverb we yep. talked about in the episode. Oh yeah, suspended. There's a, there's a big metal plate in there that has two transducers, like pickups for a guitar. Mm-hmm. And then they hit that with audio, so a plate. Yeah, and the, is actually a 
physical thing. And the decay is right here. You just unscrew this little unscrew this little lever and you can just adjust how long the plate is from one and a half seconds all the way up to four seconds. Awesome. Yeah. Um, really quickly while we're here in this hallway, we have tie lines here and this hallway will sometimes get used as an echo chamber. We'll just set up a speaker in here, pump whatever audio through it, whether it's a vocal or snare drum, drum tracks. And then on the far side of the hallway, place a mic or two, depending on if we want mono or stereo, and use that as a reverb. Um, we also sometimes will track drums in here live. Um, less common, but we do it a few times a year and that's for a little more of a kind of like 60s bouncy type of sound. And our main tracking space is downstairs, so the control room is actually directly above the live room. Of course, if you need to make a phone call. Yep, the phone booth's a new addition to the studio. We haven't done an overdub in there yet, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to doing that soon. That's, that's, that's on the 2021 list. We'll make a quick stop here. We've got all of our vintage keyboards here, our Whirlies, Whirly 200, um, Hammond B3, uh, Fender Rhodes, Farfisa organ. We've got a bunch of, a bunch of old vintage keyboards, uh, clavinets over here. So we got you covered when it comes to keyboards for sure. And our live room is right here. So as I said, our control room is directly above us. And um, typically, we're working more so with rock bands, country bands, soul bands. We're mainly working with bands. So our typical workflow would be to record live, a group live together, as opposed to building it up track by track. Every once in a while, we'll do that, but it's mainly tracking live. So typically, we'll kind of have the drummer over here facing out this way. And then, I don't know, bass, guitar, guitar, steel, if it's a country band. And we'll kind of set up over in this area by the couch. We have a, we'll just set up a keyboard world, whether that's a B3 and then to their left, a Whirly, a clavinet on top, whatever it calls for. And um, when Chris was designing the studio, it was, um, sight lines was something that was really important to him because if you're playing with a band, it's, you gotta communicate and you can't shout over to the other people, obviously. So directly across, there's a few glass window, windows over there. You can see directly over to the vocal booth. And so typically our lead singer will be over there in that booth for basic tracking. Sometimes they'll stay down there for overdubs or if it's a lot of overdubs and it's, they've got a full day of vocals, let's say, we might bring a, that setup upstairs to that booth I showed you before. And in here, this is what we call the dead room. Um, acoustically, it's much better, much tighter sounding room. So every once in a while, we'll track drums in here, just like a, a smaller setup for sure, maybe like four or five channels of drums. And we still have sight lines available. There's a window here. So you can still see over to the singer. You can still see over to the bass player, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, when we had Lake Street Dive in the studio last year, um, they actually set the drums up in here and because they wanted a tighter, more 70s dry drum sound. Yeah. I'll take you over to our vocal booths and isolation booths. Oh, one more thing while we're here, actually. So we've got these SGI, radial SGI boxes here, which are awesome. They're pass-throughs for the guitar players. Anyone who has an amp, they can just plug into it here, and then their amp, it'll just convert it over to their amp in an isolation booth, and that way everyone can still be in here, but we get the isolation we need. our vocal booth um, and since the control room's upstairs um, something I missed when we were in the live room is there's a camera in the live room there's another camera here so those are fed to TVs that are in the control room so we can watch we can see the artists and the band they don't need to see us we're not much to look at but this way we can see them and if we see I don't know we see that they're having trouble with their headphone box and then the assistant can just run down and start helping out um, and just we can keep an eye on everything, make sure that everyone's being attended to. Awesome. 
and we've got a few isolation booths here. Typically, amps go in these ones. We don't. We I have yet to be on a session that we put a person in here. We could put people in here, but we've got enough space that we typically don't. But amps will live in here. This 60s Vox AC15 is my favorite amp we have here. I love that thing. Um, and yeah, so the receive of those SGI boxes I was talking about are just fed into each of these isolation booths. Just that's where they live. That's where they're normally stashed. Another one here, um, this has got our B3, um, Leslie speaker for the B3. Um, we'll typically wheel that out into the hallway where the keyboards are, but this is where it lives. Um, we've got our Studer A80 with the whole preview path for cutting records from tape for the Neumann lathe. That gets used somewhat regularly. And lastly, we've got the downstairs office. This is our second piano. They said it's brighter, kind of more honky tonk, um, aggressive, brash type thing. So it's really not uncommon to have both of them mic'd up on one session. But we might throw a steel amp in here, or this is usually the last isolation booth to get used. Um, but we've got another camera over here. So if we do have a piano player playing, we can see them. And yeah. Awesome. You're using these Behringers. Yep, the PowerPlay 16s. How for do those work? So basically, um, you get 16 channels, 16 mono channels that you can select from. When you select it, it highlights red. And then you've got a channel volume. So that's just, let's say that the bass is on three. So I select three, and this is the level for just the bass. Mm -hmm. And you can pan it, you can adjust the level, you can EQ, and then you've got a master volume here. So every player gets to build their own mix. And we'll usually kind of rough the mix in just so that the player sits down and there's some basic panning basic level adjustments, and they can adjust the mix as needed. So if they need more me or the bass player's throwing them off, they can mute the bass player, whatever. Are they, are they reliable, they work well? We love them, it's super reliable, love them. And they're also, what's sweet about them is they've got a line output on them. So we use these for reamping. Sometimes we'll send these into our Leslie. Oh. Come out, line out, just you solo the track you want. Let's say we want to send a piano through the Leslie, just solo the piano on the headphone box, play back and set, plug that into Leslie and we're off to the races. Awesome. Yeah, they're great. And that concludes the studio portion of the facility? Um, yeah. The one thing left is um, the mastering suite. Yeah, we'd love to see it. For sure. Um, so Margaret Luther is our chief mastering engineer and cutting engineer here at the studio. Hi. Hey, hey Margaret. Hi. I'm Joe. Hi. Do you mind if we do a quick... Yeah, uh, no, go for it. Do you want to give a rundown? Uh, of yeah, play? so basically... Um, this room is used for a couple different things. Um, it's a mastering room, so we don't just work with just vinyl, but obviously this piece of equipment um, takes up the largest amount of space. Um, so we, as well as mastering for digital files, as well as CD or whatever else you want, um, we also cut the lacquer masters that are used to make vinyl records. Um, so that's a large part of what we do. And then what I'm doing right now on my computer, which is just some exports of digital files, that's kind of the other part of mostly of what I do. Um, so sorry, the room's a little bit messy right now. <laughs> it's been a busy week. It's a working room, right? Yeah. So yeah, so this is kind of what we're working with right now, and uh, we're getting some acoustic treatments in the room um, sometime in the next few months. Um, I've been trying to basically upgrade the space and, and make it more of what I want and need. <laughs> Stellar. Thank you for letting us look. Of course. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, of course. Awesome. So many spaces, right? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much anywhere that we just walk through, except the kitchen, is an active recording space that gets used. I mean, the hallway upstairs all the time, all the booths except for the machine room get used. Um, this is where the Leslie usually goes, right in here. So this hallway is getting used. Um, Chris likes going into a, an amp. He'll usually go into this Roland Jazz Chorus amp out of the Whirly. So this hallway is getting used. Um, we've got our artist lounge over here, which has a slide from upstairs, you know, for speed, you know. Mm -hmm. Sessions. It's safety. Session players want it fast. So you got you to run oh, down. Oh, Theremin, huh? Yep, that gets used from time to time. Um, That's wild. But when we did the direct-to-disc session with Blackberry Smoke in November, 
Um, this room usually, this is the artist lounge, it usually doesn't get used for tracking, but it was an 11 piece band live to two track, live to vinyl. So for that, um, we actually had a eight by 10 Ampeg SVT cranked in here. Yeah, so that's, that's the studio. Thanks for coming to check out Welcome to 1979. If you ever find yourself in Nashville, we'd love to have you show you around. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you. That's it. Signing off till next time. Show us your studios. Links in the description for you to upload the video of your studio. See you soon. See you.